With the City Double Cash Card, you get 1% cash back when you buy and 1% as you pay. That's like the joy of getting two W's on the road. We're catching the home run ball without spilling your drink. Double boom. Double the love with the City Double Cash Card. Apply now at city.com slash double cash. And good Monday morning, everybody. <laughs> Welcome in to a new audio experience. <laughs> sort of. Uh, Golik and Wingo on ESPN Radio. Uh and ESPN2 and the ESPN app. Uh, we're glad you're here with us. Trey Wingo, Mike Golick, Mike Golick Jr. Hi, fellas. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I- I'm doing well. I-, I-, I think this was put best to me in, in starting a-, a new show after 18 years of an old show. Was As my wife said, she said, you still have, you have different classmates. You're just repeating a grade. So and, it's, and, it's something you're familiar with. Well, I, I thought, <laughs> yes. oh, new classmates. Yeah, that's a cool thing. Okay, yeah. I get that. But then the repeating the grade, I think, was a subtle shot. And not just me, yeah. but all of us. Oh, oh there's no, nothing, nothing subtle about it. That was yeah. subtle as a sledgehammer. Yeah. You can have new classmates going. You, know, you can transfer schools. Right, you can do right. anything else. Staying yeah. back a grade is a decided shot yeah, at all of that us. That seemed to be the real emphasis of her point, that we were repeating a grade. Yeah, probably. <laughs> and we're going to do it for four hours. Yes, we are. Yeah. It's going to be Every nice. Day. Which makes it even worse. By the way, you guys yeah. kicked off your show with the Rough Riders anthem, which I don't think should go unnoticed by anyone involved in this one. Good going job, buddy. Straight you. from those horns to the Rough Riders anthem. Is someone won a bunch of money in Vegas on that one if there was any sort of prop bet. Well, there you go. See, we're learning already. And we're making people money already. So listen, <laughs> really, <laughs> it's a everybody win. wins. And look, we want to be clear about something. This is a this is a different thing. This yeah. is a new experience, and, and we get it. Uh, we understand um, there was a great show that went on for many, many years. Right. 18 of them, to be a fact. Although I can never figure out... Sometimes it was 17, 18, 19. It seemed like the year this was the massage a little bit. This would have been if we went yeah. the rest of the way. It would have yeah. been the 18th year because we yeah. started in 2000 and it's 2017. So you yeah. count that first, you know, the 2000. It'll yes. be the 18th year. Gotcha. So I, we get it. It's it's a little new. Yeah. It's a little different, and we understand we're we're sort of adjusting as well. So yes, we, we are. We want you to know that we're with you. We are okay? with you. We're all on the same page here, and we're gonna try and do. What you guys did for a lot of years. By the way, we do have a Mike and Mike swear jar here. Yeah, we do. So anytime any one of us say that name instead of the name of this show, we're going to throw some money. It's just because we need to transition to the new show. Correct. You know, you know, yeah. we have to leave back the old and go with the new. So we have the, it's ways to learn. We're like a new pair of underpants. At first, we're constrictive, and then we become a part of you. And really, that, and there you go. And, it, wait, who, and who that's had it. wait? Who had six oh two in the pool? Yeah, that's it. Huh? Who had First Wayne's World reference of the day. Go. Dilly dilly. <laughs> And, wait, what did you just say? And a dilly dilly. Wait, what did you say? I said the first Wayne's World no, reference no, of the day. That, dilly say? dilly. Dilly dilly. There, there you go. go. By Friend the way, of the crown. By the way, kudos. Of before, we, the before we get the off, the, off the top, kudos to, to my son here. He yeah. did Arizona State, Utah State, yeah. uh, Saturday night. Air Force, Utah State. I, I'm sorry. What did I say? Arizona State. Air For- Arizona State's a different thing. I don't yes. have a coach anymore. Air Force and Utah State. Saturday night, ten fifteen. So as I said, I didn't see it, but yeah. I said, "Hey, have a good, have a good game. Hope it all goes well." His only comment was, "I'm looking forward to getting dilly dilly in the broadcast." And did you third quarter? There you go, <laughs> like clockwork. Five whole people heard it. Friend of the crown. <laughs> Congratulations. So anyway, we're off and running. We hope you're enjoying uh, this show with us and uh, stick with us for a while. So, uh, you guys ready to get started? Let's do it. All right, let's head off the top. It's time for. Off the top. Whether you like it or not, it's just beginning. With Golik and Wingo. All right, here we go. We'll start uh, in the NFL in the Sunday night game. Chris Boswell, how about this? A career-best 53-yard field goal as time expired Sunday night to give the Steelers that 31-28 win over the Packers. You know, this one was way closer than everybody thought it was going to be. And and kudos, let's first give it to Brett Hundley. He looked a lot more comfortable out there. Took him a little bit, but it's tough to expect him to step right in and 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 really fill the shoes of Aaron Rodgers. He's not going to fill them at all, but he's playing better. But that was surprising to me as close as that game was for the Pittsburgh Steelers as we start to look forward in the top teams of the AFC where we know New England is sitting atop there of what Pittsburgh not really taking care of. They, they did it. They got the win, and that's all that matters in the NFL. But as you start to look forward, you say, wow. That offense, no Aaron Rodgers, they did give up 28 points. They did, and that's the concerning because right now we're just basically looking for the flaws in the teams we know are going right. to be there. We right. know Pittsburgh is going to be in the postseason picture, and as great as that defense has been, they lead the league or are second in the league in a ton of categories. A couple more sacks last night. 
But that secondary, we saw blown coverage on one of the first touchdowns. We saw a couple instances where they got mixed up again in an area that, especially against New England, has been an Achilles heel for them. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned New England because I think that's the matchup everyone's looking to at this point in the AFC. Week 15, it'll be Pittsburgh hosting New England. They hosted them last year, but remember Landry Jones started that game, not Ben Roethlisberger. So uh, that will be the game to watch going down the stretch in the AFC. Ben threw for 351 yards. Four touchdowns as he won his eighth consecutive primetime home game. He's now 20-3 and three in primetime home games, throwing for at least four scores in each of the last four. We continue with... Off the top. Behind three touchdown passes from Carson Wentz, who leads the NFL in that category, the Eagles rolled to their ninth straight win as they whipped the Bears 31-3. to three. Yeah, they lost three fumbles in this game. Usually when you're losing you know, fumbles like that, losing the ball like that, things aren't going to go well. But, man, the Bears, they are... They are listen... I give him you, Mitch Trubisky. They're saying there's a guy you Mitchell. live with him. 140 yards of total offense. The offense is is really struggling right now. I do like their defense, but you're going against one of the best offenses in the league. And at some point, even if you're a really good defense, which I think the Bears can be, you just you just get hamstrung by an offense that just can't do enough for you, and you you end up on the field too long. You know that all too well, yeah. and have to kind of sympathize because we've seen that happen with the Giants and the right. Broncos too defenses we've seen be great at times over the last few years that because of the imbalance tend to struggle but last night for the eagles i mean they're electric sliding on the field that Life was that good. was fantastic really well done. i thought that was really well done that, and they did it more than once yeah they did <laughs> they decided to do it more than once you have a lot of chances to practice celebrations which yeah. are going to be important going forward at 10 and 1 now this has long stopped becoming a blip or a statistical anomaly or anything this is a trend this is a really good football team and an nfc that is full of them right now they're the well, most balanced team team in the NFL, and that's including the New England Patriots. Well, right now, they're the seventh team in the Super Bowl era to win three straight games by at least 28 points. The first to do that since the 2012 Seahawks. But more importantly, if you're an Eagles fan and you know your franchise's history, you're starting to think about reservations because this is the fourth time in franchise history they've started a season 10-1. and In each of the previous three, they've either made it to the NFL championship game, which they won, or the Super Bowl twice, which they lost. So 10-1 and is a really good marker for your team, if you're a Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles fan, you got to be feeling pretty good about exactly. things. So uh, we'll see what happens as they continue to go forward in what is going to be a, a very, very difficult and convoluted NFC. We continue with... Off the top. And that other team in the AFC we were alluding to, the Patriots, beat the Dolphins 35-17 to to clinch their 17th consecutive winning season that broke a tie with the 49ers from 83-98 to at 16. Dare I say old school? And the school? Cowboys, by the way, from 16, from 70 to 85. Dare I say old school with Brady and Gronk hooking yeah. up? Uh, again, five catches, 82 yards, and two touchdowns for Gronk. Uh, Brady with four touchdown passes. Remember, this team started out 2-2, two and two, and those two losses were at home. Something we weren't accustomed to seeing for the Patriots. But the one thing we always say, you give Bill Belichick the benefit of the doubt, you give Tom Brady the benefit of the doubt, that they're going to figure it out. And I would say, you know, what, six wins, uh, seven straight wins later, they're kind of figuring it out. We all enjoyed getting our licks in when they were tied with the Jets and everyone was looking up at the Bills in that division. And we all thought we were real slick with all that criticism. No, it doesn't work. Again, in looking for flaws of teams going down the stretch, though, how many hits did Tom Brady take last night? I think it was in the range of eight or nine hits and pretty hard shots from a vicious Dolphins defense. We remember a couple of years ago when they lost to the Broncos in the playoff run. That was the undoing of that team. That was the early story in the most of this season, the amount of sacks Tom Brady took over the first half of the year. And if that's something, if they don't get remedied, when they do play Pittsburgh and that defense that is yeah. slowly starting to look like Blitzburg again, Except for last night. Except for last night. I mean, listen, still found their way back to a couple of sacks. I'd be worried about that because, as we've seen, even Tom Brady can't overcome getting punched in the mouth that many times. Well, well, that's the thing, you know, and and this is sort of the gamble the Patriots have made when they traded away Jimmy Garoppolo at the trade deadline for essentially what is going to be basically a late first-round pick. I mean, it's going to be in the second round, but it's going to be San Francisco, so you're picking 33, 34, 35. Uh, They're betting that Tom Brady can do this for three or four more years. And at that time, when they made that trade, this year's Patriots team had already given up more sacks than all of last year, and we're compiling on that. So, you know, Tom can eat all the avocado ice cream yeah. he wants. Yeah. If he's not getting protected, that's going to be the biggest issue going forward. Do you think he put out that TB12 book at the time he did to kind of put some of those fears to rest? Like, listen, guys, I know I'm taking all these hits, but I've conditioned my body to absorb these. I've got <laughs> crumple zones like a car. Well, he actually, you know, he tries to go <laughs> like a like a limp fish whenever he gets yeah, hit. Yeah. And people that I that have played in the NFL talk to him said it is weird when you hit Brady, you know, sometimes people brace and they get all tense. 
with him, he literally does go limp like like seaweed. He goes, it's impossible. It feels like you're sacking a, a, a you know piece of wet paper. Unless you're blindsided. I mean, he doesn't see it coming. That's the one. Then you're going to feel it. That's, that's the yeah. one. That's when the mineral water comes into play. There you go. And by the way, to your point, you know, they were 2-2 two and two in the first uh, four games of yeah. the season. Last time they were 2-2 two and two was 2014. Everybody buried them. And they went on to win the Super Bowl. Yeah, they did. So uh, they're, they're a resilient bunch. They're good that way. Is what we like to say. We continue with. That we gotta hit this one. There we go. Off the top. There you go. Even better. So oh, if, if you had six ten, yeah, as to when <laughs> Trey would screw up something in the show. Congratulations, you're a winner. Um, the Rams snapped the eight game Saints winning streak with a twenty six twenty win in Los Angeles. Jared Goff looks solid, three hundred fifty four yards and two touchdown passes. And they control the ball. They control the ball for over ten minutes more than the Saints. And that's one way to beat the Saints is keep that high potent offense. So Kamara, what he's doing, he's been great. Boy, he has been something else. Him and Ingram in the backfield, and you know what you're going to get out of Drew Brees. But the talk this year had been that New Orleans defense. So now you're matched up against one of the best and most high scoring offenses uh, in the NFL, and the Rams and Goff still getting it. Done. You see why Marshawn Lattimore is one of the Rookie of the Year candidates. In his absence yesterday, that secondary right. looked like it had a lot more trouble than we had previously seen. You combine that with an offense that, listen, is going to flush the pipes defensively and show you where the weaknesses might be. Still saw some quality pass rush from Cam Jordan and those guys yeah. up front. These are two teams we are going to see later on. But, man, I just I found myself feeling bad for St. Louis yesterday. They've got to sit there and watch now. You mean L.A.? No, I mean St. Louis. Oh, Louis. I mean the I'm city sorry, of St. Louis. The Rams at eight and three have now snapped their streak of ten consecutive losing seasons, which have been tied for the Browns for the longest active oh. streak in the league. Now they've got to watch this. They've got a young new coach with a weird facial hairline that I can't quite explain. Coaching whoa, whoa, a great whoa, 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 whoa. team. Jared what's, Goff what, took a step forward. Wait, wait, what's wrong with his hairline? His no, his facial hairline. Okay. It goes straight from up here into the mustache. Okay. There's supposed to be a dip if you look right here. If you're watching on ESPN two <laughs> or this choose is, not to. This is the way it's. <laughs> Supposed to look the way he does it is an abomination. I can't explain it, but it's working for him. So do yes, not change is. it. Yeah. There you go. So we're taking hair advice from you. I just want to be clear facial hair. Facial. Okay. Right. facial. He did make that specific. Hair. I just wanted to be no, clear. No, my body of work has migrated south as the okay. years have gone on. Gravity has taken its toll. <laughs> well, my entire body has migrated south. That's a completely different thing. Ah. So yeah, enjoy enjoy it just being the facial hair <laughs> for a while because the rest of it catches up with Whoa. you. Believe me. Uh, but it, it, that is something. Look, uh, the Saints had basically been doing to other teams what the Rams basically did to the Saints. Uh, the Camara and Ingram thing right. had been, you know, it hadn't really been Drew Brees. It had really been about that running game. And the Rams defense, which had been suspect going into this game against the Rundy, uh, really was was the, the key in this game. So they had their eight-game winning streak snapped. And uh, the Rams are, uh, it's going to be really interesting. We'll get into that later. Yeah, yeah, just, we will. Just how, mm-hmm. just how difficult the NFC is, is going to be to navigate because there are four legitimate teams there that you feel that you're pretty good about. And we finish up off the top with uh, what may be the most interesting development in a really crazy weekend in the SEC, both in football and in basketball, which yeah, we'll get yeah, to later yes we will. on this show. But Tennessee is now backed out of a memorandum of understanding with Greg Schiano, Ohio State's defensive coordinator, to be the Vols' head coach. That, of course, according to our ESPN's Chris Lowe, the memorandum was signed uh, in, a, in Columbus by both parties Sunday, but then Tennessee decided, literally the state, not the school, the state decided, no, that's not what we want to do. Th- this one we're going to get into a lot more yes. uh, in, in a little bit, but basically the, for those that are wondering what went on is people are looking at the connection when Greg Schiano was at Penn State from 90 to 95. There was an overlap with Jerry Sandusky and Mike McCrary getting back into it, who, who wasn't there then, but but – testified that another coach had said that Greg Schiano knew there was child molestation going on there, and uh, 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 Schiano's denied that. That coach in question has denied ever saying that. There's been nothing to show, show Schiano had, been, had known anything about that. But, man, Mike, they picked it up at Tennessee, the big rock there. They spray-painted the rock about uh, that. Politicians got involved. So you wonder, is this... Is there legitimacy to this, or is this just a mob mentality and then politicians jumping on top of that because they see their their public you know, going one way and they want to go that way? There's a, there's a lot of tentacles to this. Yeah, it, it tends to be an area where, listen, 2017 happens and the social media monster catches on to this, and 
when you've got a world that is so enamored with the headline but rarely explores the depths below it, you get something like this to where you wonder how many of the people involved, and Dan Wetzel from Yahoo Sports wrote a great piece on that, and how he wondered aloud how many of the people that were actually out there chanting against the athletic director, against Greg Schiano, actually understood what was being accused here, how it was sort of a he said, he said of sworn testimony on both sides, one side that we point to uh, um, with what we heard from McQuarrie, but the other side of the coach that he mentioned who was also under oath saying that he never heard these things. So it's a really tangled mess that exposes a lot of the flaws about the way that I think fans and the public certainly consume these things and turn it around into something that at times it's not, but also how Tennessee's doing business down there and well, what it means for them going right. forward. You're exactly right. That That's another part of this. I think a lot of people were upset with the idea of Shiano to begin with, and then they found this as a way to latch onto that and sort of rally up, ratchet up their beliefs right. there. I mean, you know, the whole thing with John Gruden, was he at that restaurant? Was right. he not at that right. restaurant? You know, Sorry, you know, he's actually in Seattle when supposedly he's at that restaurant, you know, in Knoxville trying to, trying to work out a deal there. So there's a lot of tentacles to that that we'll get into yeah, a little later yeah, on. a lot to get into uh, with that. With Booger McFarlane, he'll join us uh, a little later on Golik and Wingo. Okay, that was off the top. Uh, by the way, we are Golik and Wingo on ESPN Radio and ESPN2, presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests on the Shell Penzoil performance line. Tweet us at the 1-800-Flowers.com Twitter feed but let's now get into what everyone's talking about brought to you by o'reilly auto parts better parts better prices every day and and i think we need to talk about something that was sort of the beginning of this show what we saw out of pittsburgh last night I, you know this was a team in green bay that came in without aaron Rodgers, that came in with with real problems offensively the last couple of weeks and they sort of hung in there for a while you know they really did I think a lot of people thought, especially when Pittsburgh went right down the field and scored on that opening drive, they missed the extra point. I get that. Okay, this is going to be Pittsburgh establishing their their dominance over the Green Bay Packers, and this is a team that we're going to see maybe maybe look like a little juggernaut. Maybe that can be, okay, we, we know that the Patriots can do all these different things, and once again, they had another big one. It was 35-17, I think, was the final score over the uh, over the Dolphins. You know, they, they, they made sure that the Dolphins knew early we're the better team, and they sort of dictated to them. And we were, I think we, people wanted to see that from Pittsburgh last night against a weakened Green Bay team, and it just didn't happen. And it leaves you wondering, okay, just how good is Pittsburgh at 9-2? and two? Because, yeah, they had yeah. the big blowout over Tennessee when Mario tossed four interceptions. But before that, they also had to squeak by an Indianapolis team that's also undermanned. Yeah, this was a, a game they had the 6 nothing lead, and then they didn't have a lead again until the fourth quarter when they went up 28-21. Uh, you know, Green Bay kept taking it. So this is a 14-14 game at halftime, 21-21 going into the fourth quarter. And you know what you're going to get. Again, you get 31 points, and you get Boswell to kick the, the game winner at the end. But you get 31 points, you think you're going to win. And the biggest difference to me, Mike, had been that Pittsburgh defense, which had played right. well. I thought, man, this is going to be one of the young, up-and-coming defenses uh, that's playing better and better. But it still shows their their some of their youth and their inconsistencies right now to let a team like, like the Packers so undermanned without Aaron Rodgers put twenty eight on them. Yeah, you saw one of those first touchdown passes on a pretty bad blown coverage yeah. on the wheel route downfield, and that's the part that started to worry me because we had seen that group I think benefiting some. Now, obviously, they had invested some uh, some draft picks into that area of the field and brought some guys over, but. It had always really benefited from that front seven for Pittsburgh and the guys that they've got up there to get after everyone. I mean, you draft Bud Dupree and you've got, you know, Vince Williams in the linebacking core, Cam Hayward, Tuit on the D line, all of these guys that are pretty good at harassing quarterbacks that are unbelievable athletes and are the first group of probably any unit in the NFL that I would want coming off the bus. But the bottom line is last night it was still having those issues on the back end that have plagued them. And again, when you talk about where they want to go, these are the impediments. Well, they, they, I mean, they are second in the league in sacks. Yep, they're they, going in that game, yeah. 38 sacks. Jacksonville leads away with 41. Jacksonville. Uh, yeah, Pittsburgh has, has 38, yeah. Yeah, so you, mean, you, you thought that would be, especially against a guy like Hunley who – you know, it has mobility, he but does. he hasn't looked comfortable in that mobility a lot of times. You know, you watch him roll out, you watch him run, and you feel like he should be better at that part of the game. Mm-hmm. And so you thought that would be a place where they could dictate to him. Give Brett Hundley a lot of credit. Yeah, I completely agree with yeah. that. Yeah, 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 he is. He is finally kind of playing into 
Yeah, Mike McCarthy was adamant. This is our guy. You know, yeah. we drafted this guy. He knows our system. He is going to be the quarterback. We're not reaching out anywhere else. And, and early on, it looked like, uh oh, maybe this wasn't the thing to do. But yeah, he's kind of rounding in. And, and I don't know how much more we really should expect out of Brett Hundley, quite honestly. I, I'm not sure what we should think or how far we should think he should be able to take this team. Well, the other thing, too, is you saw that. Uh, at- uh, at, before the game on the field, there was Aaron Rodgers throwing. Right. He was making some throws, cutting it loose with the collarbone. You know, there's a potential in a couple of weeks that he might be able to get back, depending on where Green Bay is in this situation. Uh, but to the point of the, about the defense, uh, this was uh, our Ryan Clark, who obviously played with the Steelers, their safety. He'll join us later on today. He says he just thinks Pittsburgh's defense isn't good enough right now. In the last few weeks, they haven't tackled on defense and they haven't communicated defensively. Mm-hmm. Those weren't the things we were seeing very early in the season from this Pittsburgh Steelers defense, which had improved greatly over the, from the past few years. Mm-hmm. You can't do those things. You can't go into the weeks against teams like the New England Patriots and win like that. As New England Patriots has shored their defense up, the Pittsburgh Steelers are going the other way. Well, hmm. and, and that's the key. If you're playing the Patriots, the two things you don't want to hear, we're not communicating well and we're not tackling. Because Bill Belichick will exploit both of those things in a way that only Bill Belichick can. You yeah, know? C- completely agree. And you, you look at that, as you mentioned, they, they take them on, what, December 17th? Yep. They have, uh, they're at Cincinnati, then home to Baltimore, so a couple of division games, but the division isn't very good right now. Baltimore plays tonight. We'll see what they do. And then you mentioned New England, then they're at Houston, and they finish up at home against Cleveland. So, But everybody just zeroing in on that New England game, knowing these two teams are going to be there at the end. Week 15 is what yep. everyone in the AFC is looking at, unless you're the Kansas City Chiefs oh. and you're looking to find out where our running game was. You're not kidding. And where our what offense went. happened? And we will get into that. It's remarkable. Help. We, we, we've yep. done some of the numbers on NFL Live. It is amazing to look at the splits through the first five games and then what's happened since then with that Kansas City Chiefs offense. Okay, so that's a lot in the AFC uh, with the uh, what's going on with Pittsburgh and New England. But coming up, the four division leaders in the NFC last year didn't make the playoffs last year. That's never happened before. We've never had four division leaders uh, make the playoffs. Then none of them made the playoffs the, the season before. We'll delve into a very deep NFC coming up a little later on Golik and Wingo. Life happens. With ADT, you can feel safe with an ADT starter kit professionally installed for only $49. Call today and install an ADT starter kit that includes security panel, keypad, key fob, entry and motion sensors, and for a limited time, get a camera included and installed at no additional cost. That's a $449 value installed for just $49. Requires 36 month price range contracts, QSB, and easy pay. Activation early turn fees may apply. Certain marks excluded. License available at ADT.com, Florida EF001121, using f one six nine. The holiday season is upon us, and it's time to get serious about your shopping. Never fear, Sport Clips Haircuts Holiday Halftime Giveaway is here. Finish off your gift list or splurge on yourself, because Sport Clips is giving away $500 cash every day now through December 15th. Visit sportclips.com slash holiday to enter for your chance to win. Sport Clips, it's good to be a guy, especially during the holidays. No purchase necessary. Ends 12-15. Must be 18 or older to enter. Subject to official rules at sportclips.com slash holiday. Void where prohibited. Having successfully navigated one segment on there the you new go. show, they're going to allow us to do another segment. So we're building blocks. What? Slow steps. We've building been renewed. Foundation. Slow steps. So yeah. So just in case uh, you know people are waking up and they're like, "Wait a minute, what happened to the old?" It, it's a new thing. It's a new transition. Golik and Wingo here. And just so you know, if you're having this thought, I've made a huge mistake. We might be agreeing with you. <laughs> I always so, like to remind people when they hear something new like this yeah. because I do first and last before this shameless yes. plug. Check yep. it out, four to six a.m. There you go. But after World Series games, they would put us on from 3 o'clock until 6 a.m. Fun! So it disrupted the time period. Oh, yeah, Yeah. of course. An extra hour full of baseball for me, which is very exciting. But I would always remind people, you're not late for work. When you're hearing something different at that time, you generally tend to think... Oh my God, I'm not where I'm supposed to be. So no one's late for work right now. You're good. We got you. Just so you know, I think... I'm not where I'm supposed to be at this point, but we'll figure it out. You're the odd man out right now. You're you're working your way in. We'll get there eventually. I'm easing my way into this. (laughs) Uh, By the way, nobody is easing their way into the Super Bowl from the NFC side. You you look at these four teams atop the NFC, and it's really interesting. We We talked about it earlier, but all four of these teams, the Vikings, the Rams, the Saints, and Philadelphia, none of them made the playoffs a year ago. In fact, the Saints have made the playoffs in four seasons or missed the last three, and this would be the fourth. Um so we are looking at a, a seismic shift in the NFC. And clearly Philadelphia has the most going for it. They've won nine straight games. 
Uh, they started 1-1 one and one after the big win at home, and then they lost to Kansas City when Kansas City was good, which seems like a long time ago. We'll get into that a little later. But of these four teams, do you, which one do you trust the most? Well, I mean, I think it's Philadelphia. Philadelphia, I think, is the most balanced team, including the New England Patriots in the league. So I, I think one of the questions is, we, we all think it's New England in the AFC, right, with the closest team being Pittsburgh? You know, because you have the top of those divisions. You have New England, obviously. You have Tennessee and Jacksonville, Pittsburgh, and then Kansas City amazingly keeps losing and amazingly keeps staying atop that division because the other teams in there just don't want to win either. So we think it's Pittsburgh closest to New England. Is there an NFC team, are they closer to Philadelphia than Pittsburgh is to New England, or is there a bigger spread there? I would ask you this because I'm looking at this now and just sort of doing this in my head. Of those four teams, tell me one unit that you think Philadelphia has that's better than a unit on one of those other teams. Best quarterback in that division, who you think it's going to be? Is it division are we, or conference? Are we, and, in the and, conference? In that conference, are we saying Carson? Do you trust Carson Wentz more or Drew Brees more going into the playoffs? Well, I think on pedigree, you'd have to trust Drew Brees. You have to trust Even though Carson Wentz Carson's is your MVP right Carson, now. And he, but and he your, leads yeah. the NFL in touchdown he passes. Does. Not taking anything away from but him. But I'm saying when it comes down to, to it. your point, you're yeah. right. I who do you trust more going forward? Which defense do you trust most going forward? That's an interesting question. Minnesota. 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 It's probably going to be that yeah. one. I mean, which running back group do you trust more going forward? The Saints, probably. Yep. The Saints. Maybe look, the maybe the Rams. Maybe the Rams with Gurley, how he's catching the ball out of the backfield yeah, but as the well. One-two punch of Kamara and Mark. It's been, and remember, now, look, they weren't great yesterday. I get that exactly. But Kamara remember, was. Kamara so, was great yesterday. But remember the last time they had a great running attack? Oh yeah, they Super won the Bowl. Super Bowl. Yeah. And so, yeah. so spin it forward even more. Receivers. Is there a better receiving duo in the league than what Minnesota's got right now? No. And Thielen and Diggs. Probably not. Well, or, well, you, you may lean toward Atlanta with what Julio Jones has done and put Sanu with him, but Jones is ridiculous. Exactly. So I still I haven't found a place. Maybe the offensive line is maybe where I would give the Eagles a win over those other groups. I get that. And that's without a future Hall of Famer in Jason Peters. Yes, yeah. that which they deserve credit for overcoming, yeah. and they've overcome injuries in a number of areas. But I guess what I'm saying is they've done it with a complete team effort. They've done it by spreading it around, but I don't know if they've done it on the backs of any one unit. And going forward, what do we trust? Now, see, I'm glad you brought that up because, look, Carson Wentz is the shiny object, okay? Yes. And he's got, he's, he leads the league in touchdown passes. Don't right. get me wrong. But when you look at the biggest difference from this team a year ago in Philadelphia as opposed to this season, it's not about the quarterback. It's about the running game. Carson Wentz struggled last year down the stretch of the season because the running game was inconsistent. Well, you look at what the Philadelphia Eagles can do now with not one, not two, not three, but four different running backs – all slightly different styles. With the way they've been able to adapt to, Mike, as you said, the loss of Jason Peters. Right. Look, people are talking about Tyron Smith being out for the Cowboys. Well, yeah, well, Eagles lost their left tackle, too. They seem to be doing just fine. So the adjustments that that coaching staff has made to get that offensive line good enough without Jason Peters and those four different running backs, that, to me, is when I look at Philadelphia, and Bill Belichick always likes to say this to his team when he thinks – things are going well, boys, we can win a lot of different ways. Because of the way they can run the ball in Philadelphia, Philadelphia can win a lot of different yep. ways right now. Yep. They Se- really can. Second in the league, 147 yards. Jacksonville leads away with 154. But but then, again, with Carson, 28 touchdowns. 28 yeah. touchdowns, and he's not turning the ball over, just five interceptions. To your point, Mike, you're right. You can't pick one unit or person and say that's the best in the league, even though – Wentz is your, your MVP favorite right now, he and Brady, but I'm with you. You know, when you're going to get in the playoffs, Drew Brees is still Drew Brees. So I, I get that. That's why I said I think they are, the, I'll continue to say, the most complete team in the NFL. And I should probably give them credit in one NFC area. or NFL? NFL. They're the most complete team in the NFL. All right. Well, All right. and you, you invoked the name over there, but the model's very similar to New England, right? You've got plug and play backs that all Correct. kind of fit the mold of what you need. I think on defense, we're doing a disservice to the Eagles' front seven if we compare them too, too much to the Patriots' front seven, just because talent-wise to a man in the Eagles' front seven, that is a better group. Yes, it is. But we also, tight end. Zach Ertz and what he's done this season Phenomenal. being the primary target for Carson Wentz, not obviously to that Gronkowski level, but to the point you look around those other tight ends in the division, and obviously Kyle Rudolph's going to get some note for the Minnesota Vikings in that group, but Zach Ertz has had one of the best statistical seasons of any tight end in the NFL right now. He has, and and you, know, you mentioned Kyle Rudolph, and one team that we haven't talked about yet in this discussion is Minnesota. And I think that a lot of people are looking at Minnesota with this yeah, but thing, because their defense is good, and their wide receivers do great. 
I don't think people are ready to embrace what Case Keenum is doing. You know, I mean, it's sort of weird that, that a couple of weeks in a row, Mike Zimmer has had to say, Case Keenum will be our starting it's quarterback. It's ridiculous, quite I honestly. Mean, why, why would you yeah. even think about it? And a lot of people are saying, well, hold on a minute now. Yeah, he's doing this now, but once the playoffs roll around, look, guys, Case Keenum is playing beyond the X's and O's. Now, will he be able to do that going forward in the playoffs? I don't know. But I can tell you from watching the game, the way he's not managing the offense. He is dictating that offense. He's playing beyond the X's and O's. You watch him when there's distress in the pocket around him, where there's where there's conflict in the pocket. He doesn't get rattled. He goes through his things. He resets. He takes off, looks off one receiver, and is calmly looking for the next one. The game is not too fast for Case Keenum right now, and that's the thing that I find most fascinating. Because this, look, he's the, he's really their third string quarterback. Yeah, he's their third string guy, and he suddenly has found an unbelievable MVP-type quality to him. And you know, it's, uh, it's amazing there. You have to give credit to the O-line. He's been sacked. Also, by the way, brutal last year. Brutal, and yeah. did a complete redo. All five guys, and did a complete redo. He's been sacked seven times. That's it. Carson Wentz has been sacked 24 times. So I guess the question is, we all agree oh, yeah. Philadelphia is the best team in the NFC. Who gives them the biggest problem? Who, because we're talking, we talked about the AFC last segment. It's New England, and we think it's going to be Pittsburgh that should be able to give them the, the the most trouble. So, who in the NFC? If we say it's Philadelphia, who is it? You know, is it New Orleans? Is it is it Carolina? You know, is it still Atlanta who's sitting there at seven four? Well, that's Minis- that's an interesting one. So, so uh, to me, I mean, I I don't know where to go. I, there, there's part of me that wants to say the Rams. Yeah. I mean, there really does. Seattle's losing those secondary guys left and right. That's really going to hurt them. So it would it be the Rams who can pass pass rush like crazy, and Wentz has been sacked 24 times, and you know L.A. can score on offense. Yeah, and I think that's the area, if you're looking at the Eagles' defense that we've consistently talked about this year, and part of it is because of injury, but that secondary definitely lags behind the other parts on that defense, and if you're going to exploit one area, that would be it, and you've got the downfield options. Sammy Watkins starting to show up a little more as of late. Cooper Cup's been the story on offense for them a lot of this season, so I think with that and Todd Gurley, his role in the passing game as well, gives them enough options to stress you in the area that you're most open to stress. Or, or is it, you know, old faithful and Drew Brees now that he yeah. has a defense and a running game, you know? Well, you, you just hope that uh, that some of those nicked-up guys in the secondary can come back yeah. uh, for New Orleans. Because yeah. obviously, Marshawn Lattimore not being there made a huge difference in that game against the Rams. Jared Goff went crazy. What do you have, 354 in that game and, uh, and a few touchdown passes? But going back to the conversation about Minnesota, it is crazy. They've won seven straight games, and Mike Simmer still won't say Case Keenum is a starter. I, I'm stunned season. at that. I mean, just ride this, man. Yeah. I mean, why why aren't you riding this? Why would you think about putting in or even a question of putting in a guy yeah. who had a horrific injury, horrific, and, and hasn't and, thrown a pass or run a play since then that you could insert them him and keep going? It, it's ridiculous. That, that's the point. I mean, people think, well, we know our upside's bigger with Teddy. How? How do you know that? How do you know that 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 your upside is better with Teddy? Because look, we all wish him the best. Absolutely, hope he'll play great for many, many yeah. years. But you can't sit there no. logically and say, "Well, we know we're better with Teddy." You don't know that because we haven't seen it. I just saved hundreds of dollars by switching to Geico. I've never felt more alive. Disclaimer, Geico cannot guarantee you will feel more alive. You either possess functioning respiratory and circulatory systems, or you do not, or you are a zombie. If you are indeed a brain-starved zombie and you would like to save money on car insurance, the Geico legal team applauds your excellent life choices, even in your shambling afterlife. But we strongly encourage you to visit Geico.com or download the Geico app. Please stay a minimum of 500 feet away from our large and presumably delicious, delicious brains. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. We roll on. Golik and Wingo. Trey Wingo, Mike Golik, Mike Golik Jr. Uh, we are presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests appear via, appear via the Shell Pennzoil. Appear via the Shell Pennzoil performance line. That was easy for me to say. There you go. Uh, lots to get into here. Uh, so we talked a little bit earlier about the top of the AFC. Uh, then there's the Kansas City Chiefs. Guys, they started five and zero on the year. They were averaging almost thirty three points a game. In the six games since. They're averaging well under 20, and it has all gone awry. The Buffalo Bills, by the way, the Buffalo Bills, who in their last two games had given up over 100 points, 101 between uh, the Chargers and the Saints. They go to Kansas City, and suddenly it, we thought it might be a get-right game for the Chiefs offense. 
It was a get-right game for the Bills' defense. They only give up 10 points. What has gone I, I'm wrong? I'm not going to lie. I, I can't figure this out. I mean, we know they lost Eric Berry in game one. We thought, okay, that, that, that's a loss but for that's them. that's a defense. It's exactly right. And, and that's a big loss. But, you know, they, they played well some after that. And then they've just completely fallen off. You know, Kareem Hunt, has he hit a wall? Well, you know, has he done that? Because you look at it and Alvin Kamara, who is getting better and better, but what's the difference? He's splitting time with Correct. Mark Ingram, where Kareem Hunt had, before last week's game, he had 100 more carries than Kamara did. So you wonder if he's starting to hit a wall. That offensive line has gone through some injuries there uh, as well. So, But it's very tough for me to put my finger on what's going on. But one thing I, I don't think you needed to be doing is think about changing the quarterback. Right. No, they find themselves, speaking of playing the Buffalo Bills, kind of in that same scenario where they're still very much in the playoff hunt right now. They still lead that division, yeah. although there are a couple other teams that may factor into that before it's all said and done. The Chiefs season has been like a Rorschach test. Like, I don't know who they are, and depending on what you've seen, you could make an argument either way. Maybe they're the team we saw start 5-0. and Maybe this is more what we've seen, water finding its level, mm. because people are always going to look at Andy Reid and Alex Smith sideways. That's the bottom line with this. And I think the reason that we're not all that concerned with getting into the reason as to why is, A, it's harder to quantify than, let's say, Dallas, who... The reasons they've been bad are because guys have been right. out. They're very clearly not on the field. Some of that with Kansas City, but also is we just kind of have an easy scapegoat in this in those two guys. Yeah, and look, Andy Reid said we're not considering a quarterback change. I know people want to go to Patrick Mahomes because the offense is, is foundering, but I'm not sure it's actually Alex Smith because you mentioned Kareem Hunt. Okay, right. Through the first five games, he was averaging about 122 rushing yards per game, let alone what he was doing out of the backfield catching passes and averaging six yards a carry. Since that time, he's averaging less than half that, about 50 yards a game, and doesn't have a rushing touchdown. And all their offense is predicated on them moving the ball on the ground, which opens up all the little things they like to do. There was one play in that game against the Bills. I think they started the game with five straight three and outs, okay, that sort of signified the problems. Because they have all these little gimmick plays that they've run, and they've been really successful for the first five weeks, and other teams tried to copy them. Well, one of them was a little quick screen pass, uh, yesterday, except two people were lined up there to catch the ball. Right, Tyreek Hill right. and Albert Wilson. Yeah. So two guys were within inches of each other. They both tried to catch the pass, and they both ran into each other, and the ball dropped harmlessly onto the floor. They are completely out of sync, and they're completely out of sync because they can't get anything going rushing, which sets up all the little tricks and nuances they like to run. You know, and and, and we talked about Alex Smith. Remember those first couple of weeks were like, oh, wow, he's he's look what he's doing yeah. for himself. He's going to put himself in the MVP talk in the race. But you know what? you know what he's doing? He's doing what happens most of the time. Yeah. Water finds its level. Yeah. You know what he has? 19 touchdowns and four interceptions. You know, a couple of years ago it was 23 touchdowns, seven interceptions. 20 touchdowns, seven interceptions. So yeah. that, that's kind of what he's going to be. He's not going to be a 5,000 yard passer. He'll be in the 3,000 yard range, maybe close to 4,000 yards, and he won't turn the ball over a lot. And, but that's what he is. Yeah. Look, the, the, the bottom line here is that they've got to find a way to run the ball or it's not going to work. It's, it's just that simple with him. Uh, and if they can't get that going, nothing else is going to matter. And by the way, we, we mentioned this. You know who's just one game back in this division right now? The Los Angeles Chargers. That's right. They started the season 0-4. In the history of the NFL, only one team has started the season 0-4 and made the playoffs. That was the 1992 San Diego Chargers. Yes, it was. Well, we may have history repeating yep. itself. People were talking about maybe three teams out of the AFC West getting into the playoffs. It may just be one, and it may be the team that Same started team. 0-4 Pretty cool. that's done it before. Computer, execute 12.4p operation. Optimizing algorithm. Running encryption packet alpha. Night, night. Oh, I don't feel so good. What? What is it, computer? Is it hot in here? It feels hot in here? I feel a little clammy. I should lie down or something. A computer with a virus? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to GEICO. Those oysters Rockefeller were a mistake. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. With the City Double Cash Card, you get 1% cash back when you buy and 1% as you pay. That's like the joy of getting two W's on the road. We're catching the home run ball without spilling your drink. Double boom. Double the love with the City Double Cash Card. Apply now at city.com slash double cash. And good Monday morning, everybody. <laughs> Welcome in to a new audio experience. <laughs> sort of. Uh, Golik and Wingo on ESPN Radio. Uh 
and ESPN2 and the ESPN app. Uh, we're glad you're here with us. Trey Wingo, Mike Golick, Mike Golick Jr. Hi, fellas. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I- I'm doing well. I-, I-, I think this was put best to me in, in starting a-, a new show after 18 years of an old show. Was As my wife said, she said, you still have, you have different classmates. You're just repeating a grade. So and, it's, and, it's something you're familiar with. Well, I, I thought, <laughs> yes. oh, new classmates. Yeah, that's a cool thing. Okay, yeah. I get that. But then the repeating the grade, I think, was a subtle shot. And not just me, yeah. but all of us. Oh, oh there's no, nothing, nothing subtle about it. That was yeah. subtle as a sledgehammer. Yeah. You can have new classmates going. You, know, you can transfer schools. Right, you can do right. anything else. Staying yeah. back a grade is a decided shot yeah, at all of that us. That seemed to be the real emphasis of her point, that we were repeating a grade. Yeah, probably. <laughs> and we're going to do it for four hours. Yes, we're not. It's going to be Every nice. Day. It makes it even worse. By the way, you guys yeah. kicked off your show with the Rough Riders anthem, which I don't think should go unnoticed by anyone involved in this one. Going Good job, buddy. Straight you. from those horns to the Rough Riders anthem. Is someone won a bunch of money in Vegas on that one if there was any sort of prop bet. Well, there you go. See, we're learning already. And we're making people money already. So listen, <laughs> barely, <laughs> it's a everybody win. wins. And look, we want to be clear about something. This is a this is a different thing. This yeah. is a new experience, and, and we get it. Uh, we understand um, there was a great show that went on for many, many years. Right. 18 of them, to be a fact. Although I can never figure out... Sometimes it was 17, 18, 19. It seemed like the year this was the, massaged a little bit. It, this would have been, if we went yeah. the rest of the way, it would have yeah. been the 18th year because we yeah. started in 2000 and it's 2017. So you yeah. count that first, you know, the 2000, it would yes. be the 18th year. Gotcha. So I, we get it. it. It's it's a little new. Yeah. It's a little different. And we understand we're, we're sort of adjusting as well. So yes, we, we are. We want you to know that we're with you. We are okay? with you. We're all on the same page here and we're going to try and do... What you guys did for a lot of years. By the way, we do have a Mike and Mike swear jar here. Yeah, we do. So anytime any one of us say that name instead of the name of this show, we're going to throw some money. It's just because we need to transition to the new show. You know, you know, we have to leave back the old and go with the new. So we have that's it's ways to learn. We're like a new pair of underpants. At first, we're constrictive, and then we become a part of you. And really, that, and there you go. And, it, wh- and who, who that's had it. wait? Who had six oh two in the pool? Yeah, that's it. Huh? Had First Wayne's World reference of the day. Dilly, dilly dilly. <laughs> and, wait, what did you just say? And a dilly dilly. Wait, what did you say? I said the first Wayne's World no, reference no, of the day. That, dilly say? dilly. Dilly dilly. There, there you go. go. By Friend the way, of the crown. By the way, kudos. Is before we, the before we get the off, the, off the top, kudos to, to my son here. He did Arizona State, Utah State, yeah. uh, Saturday night. Air Force, Utah State. I, I'm sorry. What did I say? Arizona State. Air Force. Arizona State's a different thing. They're not yes. a coach anymore. Air Force and Utah State. Saturday night, ten fifteen. So as I said, I didn't see it, but yeah. I said, "Hey, have a good, have a good game. Hope it all goes well." His only comment was, "I'm looking forward to getting dilly dilly in the broadcast." And did you third quarter? There you go, <laughs> like clockwork. Five whole people heard it. Friend of the crown. <laughs> Congratulations. So anyway, we're off and running. We hope you're enjoying uh, this show with us and uh, stick with us for a while. So, uh, you guys ready to get started? Let's do it. All right, let's head off the top. It's time for. Off the top. Whether you like it or not, it's just beginning. With Golik and Wingo. All right, here we go. We'll start 